In this lesson, we're going to look at different ways how farmers can actually select their breeding stock. So generally, in this picture, we see a lot of um, ca different cattle. But how do we actually know which individuals, or how should a farmer know how, which individuals should he use in his breeding plan? So mainly, he should probably know what type of animal he wants to breed, what color, what shape, what size, uh, based on his environment, where, is, um, where his farm is, what his climate is like, what his environment is basically like, the, the landscape, and so on. So he has to think of a couple of factors, but there are a couple of things actually also that a farmer needs to think about when he wants to select his animals. So the first thing that he has to keep in mind is which characteristics will actually in, be inherited. So meaning which characteristics, let's say height, hair color, whatever, will be passed on to its progeny. So meaning will he be able to see that in the young calves if, if he were to farm with cattle. So the first thing that we have to think about is heritability. So heritability basically is the percentage that a trait would be affected by the animal's genetic information. Meaning, if we say how heritable a specific characteristic is, it means how easily will this characteristic be inherited by the offspring. So usually heritability is expressed uh, usually in a number of from zero to one. So if we were to have a number of 0 0.25, it would indicate that the possibility of a characteristic being inherited to the offspring or passed on to the offspring would be about 25%. So we basically talk about percentage usually, but in the exam, they could give you a heritability value of 0 point something. It's never zero and it's actually never one because we have no guarantee that something will be inherited and we can't say something will not be inherited because most things, I mean, it has a genetic cause, so it will be inherited. So it's never zero or one, anything in between. So again, if it's like 0 0.5, it's basically a 50% chance of something being inherited. And yes, zero would be a little influence, meaning genetically there's almost no influence. And if it has a heritability of one, close to one, it has a big influence. Obviously 0 0.75 it must, is much greater than say 0 0.25 for it to be passed on. Okay, so then something else that usually farmers and breeders, not really farmers, but maybe you're big time farmers, but your breeders generally um, look at or use is biometrics. So biometrics basically is the analysis of biological data, mathematically or statistically. So biometrics basically measures certain areas of the animal's body to identify the animal and also to try and figure out um, whether th these characteristics are actually passed on to the offspring. So biometrics kind of works like um, basically an identification system. So right here you can see this cow. It kind of like makes me think of people walking around in America, and, yeah, usually in America and so on, and you get facial recognition. So cameras usually can identify someone walking in the street based on their um, the measurements of their face, meaning how far away their ears are from their eyes or the nose, um, the distance between their nose and their eyes, so on and so forth. So in this case, this picture kind of shows it to you. There's certain point markers that the camera will look at and then, okay, they identify this as an individual. So same thing right over here. We have identified this cow as individual Susan, for argument's sake. So my metrics is kind of the same thing. So for cattle specifically, they actually measure certain points on the animal's body, like say the girth size, they look at the shoulder width, the top line, um, the area between the ears or the head basically and the rump, uh, the height of the animal, so many different things again so that they can identify this individual as a certain individual and also to see how strongly these different measurements actually get inherited to the offspring. So if a certain individual is a certain height, the chances of its offspring being that height or larger, usually it's very big. So by matrix, just the statistical mathematical way of trying to predict what are the chances that certain genes will be passed on to an offspring. So again, by matrix, don't look at the genetics specifically. It does not 
it's not a biological test where you look at which genes are present in an animal. No, it's actually just a prediction to see mathematically to see what are the chances of certain genetic traits in being inherited. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's a way of measuring it. And it's, try, it's also there to help farmers um, make choices in which animals to select or to help them with selection. So then there are different types of selection. We have natural selection and we have artificial selection. So natural selection basically is things that happen in the environment. So there are environmental selective pressures that causes an individual to survive or die. So in the previous um, lesson, we looked at how breeds of different breeds of animals or the dogs and so on, how we bred them selectively. So that would be artificial selection, but a natural selection uh, that is based, uh, we, we talked about how certain environmental things like climate, topography, um, whether there's drought, whether there's floods, those things in the environment, those are the pressures that will either kill certain animals uh, or allow other animals to survive. So it's actually quite random. Random, yes, and also depends on the genes the animal happens to have. If there is an animal in a population that happens to already have the gene or the allele uh, to allow them to tolerate drought, they will survive when there is a drought and then they will pass on their drought resistance alleles to their offspring and they will keep on surviving until eventually the environment change again. But artificial selection right over here is how as humans we have decided actually the corn used to look like this and for us we have eventually selected them to start looking something like this being taller bigger more kernels per cob so it's intentional selection and it was plainly based on human choice so there are then different selection methods that a farmer can do so this is for your artificial selection the first type is mass selection so basically when you have a giant okay, here we have a herd of cattle you have a herd of let's say 30 and out of the 30 you see there are four of them two male two female that have specific height requirements a specific color a specific conformation something about it that the farmer likes and he decides okay based on what i see i'm selecting these four and i'm pairing them up and they are now allowed to have offspring because i'm hoping that their offspring will have their good characteristics so in a giant population that's mass selection then we have pedigree selection so pedigree selection is you want to select an individual but before you want you use this individual you want to know what is its history so what does its parents look like grandparents and great grandparents what are their characteristics and does this individual have those in those characteristics because this will tell you whether it will pass on those characteristics to its offspring so selecting an individual here you select it based on its pedigree based on the information of its um, ancestry then you have family selection. So usually family selection, here I have a picture or a diagram basically of a family of cows. If you look closely to all the red and blue lines, you will find a link, uh, uh, some kind of link between all of them. So basically within a giant family, this is a giant herd, most of them have been somehow mated with each other, could be nephews and cousins and you name it, of one another. So all of these or most of these will have similar characteristics we can actually see from photo it looks like most of them are a dark blackish color dark brown black color and so meaning in this population if you want uh, in your own herd you want them to be black you will select family members right here to also continue mating with one another because the chances of them passing on then that black color is very very good instead of you using a white individual and maybe a cream individual and hoping a black offspring comes out so family selection is based on the family um, history and also what you see in the family characteristics so then you have progeny selection and progeny selection is a farmer will allow individuals to breed let's say this is the individual in question the farmer wants to know whether he is supposed whether he can use this um, red orange colored cat to um, breed and what are the chances of it also creating red offspring so he crosses it with a certain female and based on the kids he sees oh, okay most of them is kind of a red color two of them are red two are calico 
but this individual can give red offspring. So now, based on its children, the farmer decides, okay, I'm going to use this one again and keep on breeding with it because all the kids look quite good. So you select an individual based on its offspring in progeny selection. Then we have to talk about EBVs. So EBVs is estimated breeding values, and this actually uses those biometrics we talked about earlier, all the measurements, all the physical things of um, the different individuals. And based on that, you, well, the breeder chooses to use a certain individual to breed with them. So again, it's estimated, so meaning it's not a pure science actually because it's it's been estimated physically you've taken the physical features of the animal and then predicted what are the chances again that'll pass on to the offspring so again no genetic testing were done it's not a direct thing you have never used worked with the genes or the alleles or anything it's just a prediction of and hope basically a little bit of hope that the characteristics will pass on to the offspring so it indirectly looks at genetically um, caused characteristics. So things that they usually look at is things like weight, carcass size, temperament, birthing ease, and milk um, that is produced. These are things that farmers generally are very concerned with, specifically with things like cattle, because the more something weighs, the more meat it has, the, the more the animal will fetch at, slaughter, at the slaughterhouse, if that's what you want, or a bull that is very big, the more money you can get to sell it. Uh, carcass size, same thing, it'll increase the weight. Uh, the temperament, very important if a farmer actually uh, wants to be able to handle the animal. Birthing ease, because if the female um, is not, cannot give birth quite easily, she could die, the calf could die, so many complications could occur. And also the milk produced is very important because you want there to be enough milk so that the calf can survive until this time for weaning. So basically what they do is these are different phenotypes then that we're looking at. So the phenotype is being measured and based on that we can see what are the chances that the genotype will cause this phenotype. So here's just an example. Um, you guys don't get something like this really in the exam, but I just want to explain how basically the EBVs are measured. So usually what they look at is the phenotype. So in this example here we have a pig. Uh, pig breed. So let's say in, in this instance, um, this, this farmer has a very small pig and a very large pig. And usually what they do with the EBVs, always remember this, is they any EBV value that they give you in the exam has to do with the average for a species. So in this case, we have a pig. So the average, whatever the average is for the pig would be here right at zero. Meaning if they tell you the average for the species is 250, this is where we are right here, if I can get my mouse, right here at the zero. So 250 is the heritability, um, usually, uh, or the, no, let's say that the EBV for this one is at the zero one. So this is the average where we start for the population for the species. But on this scale, they show us how much bigger a certain individual is from the average or how small an individual is based on the average. So this individual is a hundred times bigger than the average for this uh, for the pig breed. So okay fine this is for size so let's say the average here they give us would be then uh, okay let's say weight kilograms. So Let's say the average weight for the pigs is 50 kilograms. This one is 100 times bigger, so <laughs> argument's sake, 500 kilograms. So this just says how many times bigger. This one says how many times smaller is this individual. This will be like a midget. Okay, so and then they just show here the difference between these two specific individuals is 200. You said 100 plus 100, so they differ 200 um, over the average. Yeah, they just show you, they tell you that the heritability is 0.25 and they want to figure out what is the breeding value. So they just say 200 for the phenotype times uh, 0.25 and it gives you 50 units. So then if it's 50 units in total, 25 on this side, 25 on that side is how the breeding value differs between these two individuals. This is just 
a way to show you guys how they measure it. They rarely ask you to do this with the breeding value and the phenotype and so on. What I just want to bring home is they usually use a scale like this, and this is what they, what anything, what they give you refers to. If they talk about heritability or the breeding value or whatever, you always have your average, and then an individual can either be more than the average or less, because sometimes they do say, or they use plus 25 or minus 50 or whatever. So what that means is it's more or less than the average for a breed. This right here is what you guys have to know. So here they give the example. A horse farmer wants to calculate the EBV for weight for a specific breed he has bought. Farmer's farm records gave the following information. The weaning weight of this particular horse is 350 kgs. The average weaning weight for all the horses, so now the breed average, is 310 kilograms. So then they give you the heritability as 60%. So then calculate the EBV for the horse by using this formula. Just by the way, if they do not give you the formula in the exam, I recommend you please write this down somewhere or memorize it. So basically the EBV is you take the weaning weight of the individual horse you have, it will generally be either big or smaller than the average. So it's 350. And then they want you to minus it from the average of the breed or the herd. So 310. Then you times it with the heritability, which in this case is 60%. So meaning what is the EBV, the value, the percentage of, no, no it's not really percentage, but anyway, what's the value and the chances of this particular characteristic being inherited and what is its value, how much bigger basically is it than your average. So then if you do this, 350 minus 310 times 60 over 100, which is basically 60%, you get the value of 24. Okay, so it's 24 units if you must write something afterwards, but EBV generally does not have a specific unit. Okay, so in this case, 350 minus 310, and what's the difference is 40. So again, this individual is 40 times, it's plus 40, 40 um, more than your average, times 0 0.6, the, uh, how, how this could be inherited is 24. So for the last mark, they take the average, 310, because we want to know how much more it is than the average. So 310 plus that 24, because it's 24 more than your average, gives you 334 kilograms. So this in total then would be four marks. And that is the end of this lesson.